is Tracy from Gift Basket Appeal and Happy Halloween! Today we're going to make a beautiful Halloween basket. So let's get started. that are going to go inside of the basket. I found this cute decorative box and inside you can fill it with nice little goodies. So that's an option for your gift basket. I also found these cute character, Halloween character. Uh, it's a Frankenstein and a witch's hat at the dollar store and it came in a package and I thought these would be cute to use in the basket. I also found some gummy candy body parts and they come in a cute box so this is going to look really good inside of our gift basket. I also found a huge assortment of other candies that I'm going to include in our basket like M&M's, Blow Pops, Milk Duds, Smarties. So this basket's going to be filled with tons of goodies and you can use whatever traditional Halloween candy you want to use in your basket. I also found these cute little Frankenstein gift bags that I thought would be nice to fill with goodies. So we're going to include this in our basket. And to top it all off, I thought it would be nice to include a face painting kit and a foam stamp set. Okay, let's talk about what's going to go inside of the basket. I figured we'd go with a purple and orange theme. So we've got some purple shred. We've got some orange ribbon. And this is the nine foot roll ribbon. And I like it because it's got, it's outlined with black. It's a sheer ribbon. I've got some purple ribbon with some black bear trees. And I thought that would be great for Halloween theme. I've got some purple curling ribbon. I wanted to include some green in the basket and I found these cute green napkins and I'm going to show you how we're going to use this as filler in our gift basket. I found these cutesy little pumpkin and cat characters at the dollar store and so I had some skewers and all I did was tape the characters to the skewers and I'm going to use this in my basket as an added decoration. We're going to be working with the handle basket today and here's what the depth of it looks like and it's perfect and it should fit all of our items and this would be considered a medium sized basket. And of course you're going to need cellophane. The size I usually use is 30 inches by 8 feet some wrapping tape, which is a little bit stronger, and you'll need some scissors. One more thing, don't forget your tissue paper or some type of packing paper to put in your basket before we start assembling it. Now that we've got all of our items, let's get started. We're going to put our tissue paper in first and that will give our items more height in the basket. And don't worry about what it looks like on the bottom because we're going to camouflage that with our shred. Next we're going to put our shred in on top of that so that it camouflages our tissue. 
but it's gonna look really nice. And I'm using three bags of shred. Just making sure that none of the tissue is showing before we put our items in. And this makes our items stand out over the top of our basket. Now that you have your shred the way you want it, it's time to start putting in your items. Normally when I make my basket, I start with putting the larger items in the center of the basket and then start working around it with the smaller items. But because I have several pieces of smaller candy, I'm going to take some of the candy and spread it out throughout my shred. I'm going to take these cute little eyeball-like candies and just spread them around. It's cute because it has some eyeballs on it. I've got some Smarties and I'm going to take those also and just kind of individually place those throughout my shred. And you don't have to do this. If you want to just leave them in the bags, you can. Some of the candy, I'm just going to leave it in its original packaging. And I'm going to start assembling it inside the basket. Sometimes you may have to readjust as you're assembling your basket and shift things around if it doesn't look right to you. Now it's time to add, remember the napkins? I'm going to add that into our basket. And all you're going to do is unfold the napkin, kind of push in the center, bring it up like this, and just use it as filler in your basket. Let me show you that again. You're going to unravel your napkin or unfold it. Stick your hand right in the middle, bring it up like that. And now we're going to just put it in open areas in the basket. This just helps you fill up any open spaces and just adds a nice little colorful decoration to your basket. And I am quite satisfied with the way I've assembled this basket. And now it's time to wrap it up. Okay, so make sure that you're using a large surface so you can spread out and measure your cellophane for your basket. We're using a 30 inch by eight feet cellophane in order to cover up this medium sized basket. I'm gonna roll out my cellophane to the edge of the table and you may have to readjust to make sure you have enough to cover your basket. So now we're going to place our basket on top of our cellophane and we're going to measure it for size. 
you're going to pull the cellophane over the top and you want to make sure that you have enough cellophane over the top of the handle of the basket and that's going to create a fan effect but you'll see that later so I need to be about this high above my basket so it's still not high enough so I'm going to have to remeasure it and that's probably about eight inches above the basket so I'm just going to remeasure it a little bit more so that I have enough coming over both sides of the basket and so if I do it now that's going to be enough actually it's better to measure much higher than to come up too short now we're going to bring the other side up and we're going to measure both sides so that it's even and that's where we'll make our cut of our cellophane so now I'm going to gently start cutting my cellophane have to be very careful not to pull on it otherwise it will rip so now we have our cellophane all cut and ready and we've got it coming up about eight inches over the handle of the basket. Now we can start tying it up to make it look nice. This is where the curling ribbon comes in. We're going to use the curling ribbon to tie up our cellophane around the basket. So I usually try to use as much curling ribbon as possible. Um, this is a good amount. It's better to use more than less because you could always cut it down at the end. The curling ribbon is also going to help you attach your bows to your basket. So now we're going to gather up our cellophane around the basket. And I'm just gathering everything at the top of the handle. Don't worry about the sides right now. They should look like this, sticking out. Sticking out on each side. And don't worry about that right now. We'll go back and, and neaten that up. You're just pulling your cellophane gently, so it can rip pretty easily, over the top to neaten it up because we want it to stand out real nice. And then we're going to tie it off. Just another note, make sure that your cellophane is somewhat tight without pulling it too much so it's not loose and sagging. You just want to make sure that all around the basket it's nice and tight and so you, go, you can hold it up at the top of the handle. Now I'm going to just go ahead and tie it right here at the top in the middle. And I'm going to tie the cellophane using my curling ribbon. And this curling ribbon, as you'll see, will serve many purposes. tying it right there and I'm going to tie it one more time to make a knot okay and so now your cellophane is snug around your basket 
Now it's time to get the sides pulled in. Using my packing tape, I'm now going to tuck the sides underneath the bottom and tape them securely. So I'm only using two pieces of tape for this. There's a little trick to doing this. It's not as hard as it may seem. You're going to take your, your edge that's sticking out on one side. You're just going to tuck it in. You don't need to tape this. It'll stay covered. And you're just going to pull this. Pull your basket to the edge of the table. And folding this under neatly, you're going to tuck it down. Put the tape by the very edge. And then you're going to tape it right under. And that's all you need to do is to secure it. Then we're going to do the other side. So you have your edge sticking out. We're going to tuck it in. And you notice you can't even see the seam here because it's clear. Bring your basket up to the edge of the table. You're going to tape it at the very edge, and then you're going to tuck it right under. Okay, just to recap, on the sides here you won't see any seams. You don't need to put tape on the sides. You put two pieces of tape to hold it under, and that secures the basket. That's it. And just one piece of ribbon, secure it at the top. That's it. Now I'm going to go ahead and cut down the cellophane that's sticking out of the top so it looks neat and it fans out neatly. So all I do is gather this up and I'm going to cut once going in the top direction, going up, and then another one going down. And that's what makes that fanned out effect. So it makes the jagged edges at the top of your fan. And if I need to, I can always cut it down even more once I attach my bow. Now I'm going to make a double bow for this basket. And I'm going to use all nine feet of the ribbon for each bow. One is going to be a larger bow and the other one is going to be a smaller, more condensed bow. So I like to take all of my ribbon off of the spool. And since we're using all of it, it really doesn't matter. And so this one is going to be the smaller, more condensed ribbon. And then we'll make a really large ribbon out of the purple. So we're going to start making loops. And so all you're going to do is leave a little bit to begin with and you're going to pinch it right at the base. So you're going to continuously hold your ribbon like this between your thumb and your pointer finger. Now you'll make an alternating matching loop on the other side. Just tucking it under and still squeezing with the forefinger. And you'll repeat that motion. Now we'll come over the top and squeeze it together. We'll come back over the bottom. Squeeze it together. Over the top. Squeeze it together. And so you're just doing it on opposite sides. Then 
and I'm just going to continue to do this until there's no more ribbon left. And see, I'm still pinching it to hold my ribbon in place. And I think I've got room for one more loop. And we're going to tuck that one under. And I can go back now and neaten it up. And normally I would just tie it off, but some of you may not be comfortable handling that, uh, tying it off until you make your other ribbon. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just paper clip it together to hold it while I work on the next ribbon. Okay, so now I'm gonna take my paper clip and I'm going to just put it on my bow and that's just to hold it in place for right now. We're not going to use this um, to attach it to the basket. We're just using this for right now to hold it in place while we work on the next ribbon. So now we're going to take the purple ribbon and we're going to make it a little larger than our orange ribbon. And then that's going to be the basis for our double bow. Okay, I'm just making larger loops this time for the bigger ribbon. And so I'm using the same technique, pinching it in the middle. Just looping it around opposite sides and you could always go back and adjust it's just that that wired ribbon is just so much easier to manipulate okay, and so on this ribbon I have three loops on each side and if you have a little extra you could always go and cut it off Okay, so I'm just neatening it up. Three loops on one side and three loops on the other. Now we're ready to attach our smaller bow to the larger bow like that. And we're going to use our curling ribbon to do it. Okay, so now that I have my ribbon all done and the way I want it, I'm going to go ahead and attach the first larger bow onto the basket. So I'm just sitting it right here on the handle, bringing one piece of my same ribbon that I tied the cellophane on with, and I'm bringing one part under and the other part over. And I'm just tying it. I'm just going to do it one more time, tie one more knot to secure it. And now we're ready to attach the second bow. Now I'm going to just remove my paper clip that was holding this bow in place. And still pinching it in the middle, I'm going to take one part of the bow and go under of the curling ribbon and then take the other part of the curling ribbon and come over with it and attach the smaller bow. One knot there. And another knot to secure it. So now it's really secured on there. Okay, and once you have your bow all neatened up, 
it's time for us to decorate and attach the other side. So we're going to take our ribbon and I'm just going to bring it underneath the bottom right around the other side. Okay, so once it's on the other side, I'm just going to let it hang like this and then I'm going to attach the other bow on the opposite side. Now we're going to go ahead and decorate the back part of the basket, which is also going to look like the front anyway, but I'm using a larger orange ribbon and I'm going to use the smaller purple ribbon and we're going to attach it to the back part of the basket. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and attach this ribbon doing the same technique. Take your curling ribbon, bring one part under and the other part over and just tie it on. That way it looks neat and clean when you're using less to attach your ribbon. And I could always go back and neaten up, which I more than likely will. And tie again. Okay, and now we're ready to attach our smaller ribbon. Okay, I'm going to remove our paper clip. I'm still pinching it. I'm bringing one end under the bottom and the other part of the curling ribbon right in between and over the top. Always go back and neaten it up. And you see I have this little part right here dangling. I'm going to just go and just cut it off real neatly. Okay, I'm just going to gently just cut right across here. Very neat cut. And just leave it just like that. Okay, we're almost to the end as far as our basket goes. And I'm pretty happy with the way it looks. The fan at the top is a good height over the basket. I don't need to cut it down, but if I if you wanted to, this would be the time when you would cut it down even more. So we're gonna leave it like this. And then I'm going to just turn this around so you can see. Have double bow looks on there. And we're going to curl this up and we're going to add our final embellishment and then we'll be done. Now we could stop here, but let's take this basket to the next level. Okay, so my curling ribbon is way too long right now, so I'm going to just cut it down a little bit. Maybe take about this much off. And I'm going to just curl it up, pressing my scissor against the ribbon. And I might have to do that a little bit better than that. Let's see. Okay, and do the other one. Came out perfect. Okay, 
Okay, so now, separating our fan just a little bit. In the center, there's always a little opening. So I'm going to take my skewer. And stick it down in here. And it's sort of at an angle. Once I find the opening, just push it down in there. That's the other one. Look for the opening and just push it gently down. So we're all done with our Halloween basket. We've got our embellishments at the top. They look perfect. Our fan looks good. The bow looks good. We're all done. So have a safe and happy Halloween. Here's the ribbon that I'll be using to attach to the top of this gift. Wired ribbon that I'm gonna use also in pink. And it complements, of course, the, uh, the main bow, which I, what I'll call the main bow. And then I've got a decoration I'm going to use. And I'll be using some tissue paper throughout, filling it. And I'm going to 